Hey everyone, Dano Can here, and we are starting off today's video at Glenbow Ranch Provincial Park. Unlike our last video out at Antelope Hill, this one's much closer to home and very accessible for us. It's only about a 10 minute drive, so little uh, little chance here for Mabel and I to get out and do a walk. Emily has to work today because she switched shifts with somebody, so let's go check it out. So we'll start off today here, close to the visitor center in the site of the Morris home. Today, it is a picnic area, but in 1914, Dr. Dudley Henry Morris and his family built a home here. Quite a large home for that era too. The Dudleys would live in the home till 1918 and then it sat abandoned for about 20 years until 1938 when the Harvey family, who eventually ended up owning this land, started using the house as their summer home. So the house stood on this site up until 1977, at which time it was destroyed by fire. And the only real remnants left of the house are the chimney over here and if we pan across to the other side of this little picnic area a second chimney sitting over here so those two chimneys are all that are left of what was a pretty grand home for over 60 years and I'll zoom in here you can see there's a picture of the house and how it stood and down here in this corner it shows the Harvey family in 1945 sitting outside and you can see the uh, the back side of that chimney that still stands right over there. I'll see if I can dig up any old news articles or something on the fire, but uh, in the meantime, let's carry on with our journey down into the valley in the park. Heading past the visitor center which is closed today and heading down into the valley and the microphone probably won't pick this up but I can hear a train coming through the uh, through the valley and one of the big reasons why I'm really always enjoy this this walk is uh, that there is opportunity for some good train spotting down here so we missed this one, but maybe we'll catch the next one. So we get our first good look now at the CP rail line, Canadian Pacific, running through the Bow Valley here. And of course, the railway plays a very important part in the history of this area, but we'll talk about that in a bit. So naturally, the history of this land goes back thousands of years, and the indigenous people of this area use this valley as a of course, source of water with the Bow River being down there. But as well, the coolies provided natural ways of funneling and herding bison and using those, of course, as a food source. So, I mean, that's going back further than my historical knowledge and experience. I did do one year of the archeological history of Alberta when I had my failed university career. Um, but I don't really remember much about it. So let's quickly talk about the railway history through here. 
This route was the line that was laid out by the Canadian Pacific Railway back in the early 1800s. I want to say 1883 is about when it came through here. And this was part of the uh, coast to coast ribbon of steel that united Canada from east to west. And this is the line here through the uh, Bow Valley. So by 1881, the CPR had identified this as being a good location for a water station. The other thing that really led to the development of this area was the sandstone cliffs to the north and northeast of here. I will show you a bit more of the what's left of the sandstone mining operation as we get further into the park. But uh, needless to say, the number of people required to operate a sandstone quarry led to the development of a town, and the town was Glenbow. Uh, it's still visible as a place name if you look on Google Maps, but there really is no remnants of the town left, with a couple of exceptions. This building here is the Glenbow Post Office. Now, a post office was established in Glenbow in 1908. This building did not open until 1909 and served as a post office and general store and was closed in 1920. Apparently, it was originally green in color, and then at some point during its existence, a brick facing was added to the building, but what's left is what you can see here today. The building itself, as you can see, is in a closed area, so we can't get any closer to it to get a closer look. And being a provincial park, and also in close proximity to Springbank Airport, there's no opportunity to fly a drone here to get closer and to get a better look at the building. So this is as best we can do. I mean, the nice thing is that prior to the opening of Glenbow Ranch Provincial Park. Uh, this building was on the private property of the Harvey family and wasn't accessible to anybody except them or people who knew them and could get permission to access it. So this is better than what we had for many years. The other remnant that we can see here is kind of hard to see from this distance, but it's just to the left of that telephone pole and that is an old stock loading chute. Uh, that dates back to about 1909. At one point along this siding, you had all the amenities that you would expect. The stock loading chute, a station, station man's house, corral, a train station, and of course, a grain elevator. Long since gone. So while the post office is kind of the most visible remnant of the town, and probably that's what makes it my favorite place in the park. Sorry, Mabel. Um... My goal here is to get further east in the park as far as the trail goes, which is beyond where I've normally explored in the past. So I'm hoping to see some new territory today, and hopefully you're seeing some new territory too. Now last week when we visited Antelope Hill, we talked about how it was a former cattle ranch and all remnants of the cattle ranch had pretty much been demolished. Here at Glenbow Ranch, there are still corrals and other evidence of cattle ranching, such as Texas gate slash cattle guards in place. And the reason for that is large portions of the park are still used for the raising of cattle. So at various points in the year, certain sections of the park will be inaccessible as they are having calves and things of that nature. So you never know for sure what pathways are going to be open and which are going to be closed when you get here. And I know I'm jumping all over when it comes to the history of the park and things, you know, from the railway in the 1880s to the sandstone quarries, which we can see some of the sandstone on that hill ahead of me there, you know, dating back into the 19 teens to the establishment of a provincial park in the 2000s but you know that's how my videos roll i uh you know i don't script these they're completely off the cuff no uh no real pre-planning and sometimes the just the nature of the park and the things we're seeing along the way 
lend themselves to talking about different parts of its history. So this particular stretch of pathway goes down what I believe was going to be or was known as Bridge Avenue or Bridge Road in the town of Glenbow. And the reason for that is you can see across the valley there the road does continue and the intent was to build a bridge here across the Bull River which never did happen. So Glenbow only lasted up until I believe 1927 is when the last resident left. So it never really developed as a town. Sort of once the quarry left the area, that was pretty much the end. And this seems like as good an opportunity as any to remind you that, uh, you know, previously talking about no script and whatnot means some of these facts I may get wrong because I'm going from memory and from various sources that I've read about. So by all means, man, I think that sunlight is really messing up the face tracking on the uh, pocket mobile. Um, <laughs> So, if I've gotten any facts wrong, or you know better than I do, which is very uh, likely, feel free to mention them in the comments and help correct the historical record. So this spot here is where the Glenbow School sat. Um, school was developed in, uh, well, the school district was established in 1910 and the school uh, was finished in 1912 operated here till 1914 but even at that point the declining uh, population caused the school to suspend classes from 1914 to 1922 and then it finally closed permanently in 1928. now this area is uh, quite a bit west of where the actual glenbow town site was but this area had been surveyed with lots and um, was, you know, expected that the town would eventually expand this far out. Uh, there's not really any evidence of the school left here. Uh, probably a bit of a depression in the ground that you can see there. The building itself was moved north of here and became a private residence. I believe I know which building it was, but I don't have any confirmation of it for uh, sure to make it 100%. We're now getting into an area more where the town of Glenbow was uh, actually located. Uh, so let me show you what that looks like. There's really not a lot to see here. Um, there are some divots or depressions in the land where buildings once stood. The area is all inaccessible to the public. Uh, you're required to stay on the pathways here in the park. So you can't really go in there and explore legally. So we're gonna just kind of check it out from the park. I have been on a couple of different guided tours that talk about the history of the park. And we were allowed to walk in and see some of the depressions where the buildings were, but nothing like that on this trip, unfortunately. The uh, railway tracks there, just at the base of the hill have been silent this entire time except when we first started our trip down from the parking lot which is kind of unfortunate you know it's funny when I'm running late for work it seems like there's a train on this set of tracks all the time holding me up but when I'm here and have my camera and I'm ready to do some recording of a uh, passing train nothing at all the other thing I'll point out you can kind of see along this escarpment, you can see some of the outcroppings of sandstone. And this is the general area where the sandstone quarry operated in the uh, early 1900s. And that's why the town kind of sprang up in this area because it really you know, the quarry was the reason for the town, other than being a water stop for the CP rail. 
So no real remnants left of the quarry. There are some spots on the hill where you can see it is um, kind of unnaturally flat and that's where some of the different buildings were as they did different parts of the quarrying operation. Calgary has quite a history with sandstone. Uh, in the late 1800s, Calgary was known as the Sandstone City. Uh, that was because after the Calgary Great Fire of 1886, they were required to rebuild buildings using sandstone. And there were a number of sandstone quarries located throughout the, uh, the Calgary region. This was just one of them. The sandstone from here, most notably, ended up being used in the construction of the legislative building up in the provincial capital of Edmonton. And apparently, after the sandstone quarry uh, disappeared or went out of business, they did try to operate a Glenbow brick factory here for a period of time. Uh, but apparently the materials did not make for the best quality of bricks. So they were not well renowned for their uh, product. And uh, thus it was a short-lived operation. You can see how the landscape has changed here. Many more trees than when we were up on top of the hill or further to the west and that's because we're approaching an area known as the Narrows and basically the valley here the river kind of swings to the north and gets quite close to the hillside and so it narrows very creative name and we're getting much closer to get you a better better look at the uh, hillside and the sandstone blocks here and you should be able to see the river there as well. This little bit of running water coming down from the hillside is quite a welcome uh, relief for Mabel. She was starting to feel pretty hot I think coming through the uh, through the sun here. It's warmer than you expected. We are very close to the Bow River, and there's fresher, clearer water available for her, but Mabel doesn't seem to believe me when I tell her that, so she's taking advantage of this one more than she probably should. A good look here at one of the old, would have probably been telegraph originally, telegraph poles, the sandstone outcroppings. Can't really see it from this angle, but the CP rail line is running through that area as well. And this is a really, you know, this really demonstrates why they call this the Narrows. You got the hillside, the CP rail line, our pathway and then right there is the Bow River so very tight little connection here through the valley. A few years back I posted a video called Narrows Island Geocache which was out on this little strip of land here at that time the river was low enough I could walk out there and stay dry. The water levels are quite high right now thanks to a couple days of solid rain. It's been a very dry spring but uh, with the rain we had plus we're starting to finally see the snowpack melt up in the mountains water levels are probably going to continue to rise here through most of June. That's a little bit better water for Mabel to play in. She was anxious enough to get down here to it. She practically pulled me into the river. So 
So I think that's probably going to wrap it up for today. It's a further walk to the end of the pathway where it currently ends. Eventually this is supposed to go all the way into Calgary, but it's not complete yet. Um, it's a further walk than, than I expected. It's going to take longer, and I do have other things I have to accomplish this afternoon. So we're probably going to pull the pin on this adventure at this point. This has been a great spot here beside the Bow River to sit and relax and hope for a train to come by that hasn't happened yet. Mabel's taken a dip in the river a couple times and refreshed herself, so she's ready for the walk back. And I think that will be, you know, like I said, this is as good a place as any to wrap things up for this episode. So I do appreciate you coming along for the drive and for taking the time to subscribe to the channel and support us through that. Uh, we do appreciate it, and we will see you in the next video. Oh, right. Little chance for some bonus footage here at the end. I hear a train whistle. I see the train a coming. It's literally coming round the bend. It really is my luck, though, that this is probably the least interesting spot to see a train on this entire walk. And this is where we are when the train comes by.